Is there something you really want to do before you die? Do you have a whole list of things you want to accomplish? If you have a bucket list like we do, chances are you've included a country, or two, or ten, that you really want to visit. Of all the people we've talked to, traveling was at the top of most of their lists. The thrill of reaching a new place is exciting, but it's just the first step. If you're anything like us, you have subcategories on your bucket list. We not only want to arrive at a new country, we want to see the famous sights, eat the well-known food, and mingle with the natives in their home tongues. Chances are all of those elements will be drastically different from those of your home country. This is where anthropology comes into play. Being college students, we're encouraged to study abroad. Between the Office of International Programs and Academic Departments, there are programs on programs to choose from in more countries than you can even imagine. We're told that studying abroad in college will boost our resume and help us get a job in the growing international market. We're shown presentations on how going abroad will help us grow and develop personally and intellectually, but the truth of the matter is, you get out of it what you put in. Unless you actively participate in the culture you arrive in, just like anthropologists do in their fieldwork, you might as well stay home. Cultural anthropologists study living people in their cultures. They take part in participant observation while they are conducting their research, both domestically and internationally. They study contemporary humans and live with the people they are observing for an extended period of time. A prominent anthropologist, Bronislaw Malinowski, popularized this idea. He studied the Trobrian people and actively participated in their ways of life, even though they were drastically different from what he was used to. The islanders performed witchcraft rituals because they believed it would keep their fishermen safe at sea. Even though Malinowski did not believe in the witchcraft, his involvement in the ceremonies gave him a better understanding of the people he was living with. The same goes for college students studying abroad. It is important to keep an open mind while traveling because not all cultures are set up the same way. This is where cultural relativism fits in. This is the view that cultures must be understood in terms of their own values and beliefs and not judged by the standards of another culture. Even though these acts may not be as extreme as witchcraft, just because a way of life may seem backwards or even wrong to us doesn't mean that it is not widely accepted in that culture. In many places, American values are considered backwards even though Western civilizations view themselves as the dominant culture that does everything right. Because of the differences, arriving at a new country unlike your home may result in culture shock. This is deep feelings of uneasiness, loneliness, and anxiety that may occur when a person shifts from one culture to another. But don't let the shock of a new land hold you back from going out and experiencing all that you can the way a local would. If you don't overcome the initial culture shock, you'll miss out on learning the ways of the people and expanding your horizons. What's the point in going to the other side of the world if you're just going to sit in your room and let life pass you by? Studying abroad during college can help prevent culture shock from occurring more often in the future, and traveling in general will help you understand why cultures act the way that they do. With the workforce becoming more internationally involved, it is imperative to be understanding of other cultures and people because you never know who you'll be working with day in and day out in the future. The younger you are when you start accepting other cultures for what they are, the better off you'll be as an adult. Last summer I went to Spain. During my week in Barcelona, I noticed some differences between American culture and Spanish culture. Aside from speaking a different language, I noticed that the people there seemed unfriendly. Now, after thinking like an anthropologist, I realized that they weren't unfriendly at all. That was just how I perceived it. Since I grew up surrounded by Southern hospitality, I naturally expect a warm and welcoming environment. In case you didn't know, Spaniards don't participate in Southern hospitality. They don't go out of their way to make overly friendly gestures, but they treat each other in a respectful manner. That's just the way their culture is. Even though it's different from mine, it's not wrong. A similar experience happened to me when I went to Costa Rica in 2010. I was there for a biology excursion through school, and the first thing I noticed was that there was no English. Traveling to Central America, I anticipated there to be mostly Spanish being spoken, but I was taken aback by the complete lack of English. I have never taken a day of Spanish in my entire life and have grown up in a French classroom. The only things I could understand during my two-week stay were the cognates between French and Spanish. I was struggling, to say the least. Luckily, our tour guide was bilingual and most of my classmates were in a Spanish program. With their help, I was able to effectively communicate some of my ideas to the locals. In order to combat this culture shock, I tried my hardest to make the connections between their language and mine by talking to the natives and asking lots of questions. There wouldn't have been any other way for me to immerse myself if I didn't know what anyone was saying. When it comes down to it, the best way to understand other cultures for what they are is to dive in head first. There's so much to experience in a culture that goes past what's on the surface and the stereotypes. By studying abroad in college and traveling, you better yourself and get prepared for the future. 
We've gotten to know new cultures under their surface and along the way, check some items off of our bucket list, but there's still so much to experience. Where do you want to go?